question is implement a timer callback library. And uh, it's broken down into three operations. One is registering a callback for a future time instance. Then when the time instance occurs, you need to execute that API, the callback call function. And uh, an execution function that calls all the callbacks that is needed. And uh, I think there was an assignment exercise in the, I'm not sure, in the operating system module, which exactly asks you to implement a timer library, right? But anyway, for the sake of uh, uh, completion, I will try to give a short answer. So basically, you're asked to do a timer library. So a software timer, right? So what is a software timer library doing? It is basically taking one hardware timer or counter and providing several uh, simultaneous software timers. Basically, it means these are counts, right? And one counter is multiplexed for each uh, uh, software timer. Basically, that is the crux of the whole software timer. So here is the hardware timer counter, which, oops, counter, which may be a 16-bit counter. And uh, every clock might decrement it, or every tick might, you know, you can configure how much, how fast this is decremented. That is the tick. Right? And when the counter expires, it generates an interrupt. So that's basically how the, the fundamental CPU mechanism works, right? So you, you load a counter value, and when the counter decrements to zero, it generates, that is basically the timeout interrupt. So that is a basic CPU mechanism or the processor mechanism. So the starting point is the timer interrupt. Now, um, in, if you're working with some operating system that is taken care of, and there is basically something called a cystic timer, which provides a high resolution uh, tick by the operating system decided by the operator. It could be milliseconds, it could be tens of milliseconds, or it could be even microseconds. So basically, it provides a tick at the given resolution, at this resolution. What it means is this tick has to be processed to give the illusion of several software timeouts. So what happens is each timeout, let's say you have uh, three threads, or let, let's even not worry about threads. So basically, let's say you have some something, um, something which is, uh, let's say a protocol, protocol software, okay? So it initiates a connection. So now there are several timeouts that can happen. For example, the peer entity did not, so there may be a no response or response timeout. You don't, you don't want to get stuck there, basically. Or it could, so basically, even if you look at any client server connection, so server timed out, you would see. So basically, timeout is one kind of expiration of, of a period, right? So basically, expiration of a an interval of time. And this time interval is measured in units of ticks, right? So that's the whole idea. This is one kind of, another is you want to do something after some units of time, say let's say T units of time. For example, let's say you're blinking LED. So you have LED on and LED off, and you want to blink at a certain frequency. So what you do is you basically put a delay. So this is on delay, 
and then off delay or other way. So basically, you are actually pacing by creating a future event after an interval. So we talk about two different kinds of uh, usages of software timers. One is timeouts. This is basically in uh, something event did not expected event did not occur. So you want to recover from that. And then basically delays. That is schedule future event. So this is basically what essentially two uses of uh, the software timer is. Now you would you would probably have many such events. So some may be to do with LEDs, some may be to do with uh, uh, communication stacks, communication interface, or you may be even pumping data uh, through a, a serial interface. Let's say you can use a GPIO to uh, do what is called a bit banging to basically transmit at a regular uh, clock. Clock here doesn't mean hardware clock. At certain intervals, you want to send one bit. So this is a TX, TX. So, so this communicate. So you may do many things in the system. So there may be a software entity associated with each. This could be a driver thread for the GPIO. This could be a communication thread, and this could be another driver thread. So LED driver. So you have multiple software entities trying to schedule their future events or their timeouts. So it could be scheduling future event or timeouts, but they are being done by multiple software entities. They may be threads, they may be anything. So the point is, how do you keep track of, you have one single tick coming and there are each one is scheduling multiple future events or timeouts. So how do you keep track of all this that is what basically a timer library so it is all about keeping track of future events and what keeping track means when that event has uh, its time has come you need to execute so that is what is all about so there are three aspects to it one is basically that that is given in the question a so you are you are registering future event and this is normally done by a function that is a callback function and uh, this function has to be called when the future event occurs or it could be that when the future event did not occur you know I want to call this function so basically it's about registering a future event and the future event is with respect to current Clock. So many ticks away. So k ticks away from current clock. So that's how you express and say, call me when this if k ticks away happens. This is one thing. Or I might be deregistering, removing a future event. Basically, this happens especially for timeouts. So I talked about connection timeout, right? Now what happens if the connection um, actually handshake happened? So we talked about connection timeout. Or it could be even, you know, you're waiting for a semaphore and then you're timing out. But when the semaphore uh, guarded resource is available, you have to cancel that timeout. So you're basically canceling this timeout, future event because the expected event happened. So you may either register or insert, or you may cancel or delete. So this is a delete operation, this is an insert operation. These are two APIs required. And then these are only APIs required actually. The callback function you handle that. If it is to do with LED blinking, you handle it. If it is to do with retrying the connection, you do it, etc. So basically, we are not bothered about 
what exactly the application does when that instance happens. So there is a callback registered for it, and you give an option to unregister or deregister that callback. Those are the two APIs for the. So we have defined two APIs for the library. For the library, one is to register. So you say um, create or start a timer API with the callback function and the time future time value. The other is delete or stop timer. Again, so this may return a handle. So you will pass to know which timer you are trying to. So that handle, the timer handle. So these are the two APIs that you will decide for this library. But then in order to implement this service of ability to call the timeout, or uh, to do the create, delete, and then execution. So when the actual instance happens, so there is a, it's not an API, but it is an internal method. Internal action is execute the timer. Basically, which will call that callback function. Apart, so insert, delete three operations. So insert, delete and then uh, execute these are the th three things that are required but in order to do execute you need to maintain certain data structures in fact for all these you need a data structure right so that is what the question is all about so the best thing uh, the simplest thing is to have a data structure which is like a, a structure element which is a timer structure let's say timer structure which basically stores the future or the number of ticks and then it may hold basically the callback function pointer right this is the minimum thing required so you may create so this is the basic unit of the timer structure from that now you have multiple timers uh, going on in the system concurrently. So you need to maintain all of them together. So what you do, a simple uh, queue. So let's call it priority queue. Structure, so link or a link list, right? So basically link list. What is the priority here? It is, I would not say priority, it's an ordered list. Ordered on the uh, ascending order of future events if what it means is that the later the event it will be further down in the queue so the most imminent event is so this is the imminent most imminent event next one and then the last one so basically you can have a linked list or a queue this is queue because it's ordered and uh, so the most imminent event is here. So when you create a new timer, you are saying you insert an element in the queue, in this queue. So you have to maintain this order. So you traverse this queue and then you say this event is happening before this last event, after this next event. So I need to create a, a new node and insert it here. So you do a normal, linked list insert operation here. Yeah. You may remove, so delete an event, an element, when you are canceling a timer, right? So basically it's about, okay, this timeout need not be anymore uh, required, so I want to delete this. So you do a linked list delete operation and then you connect back the queue. So basically a queue, ordered, ordered queue, sorted in, in the order of uh, future event instance with uh, insert delete operations. Now, when do you know an instance has happened? In instance uh, expected is arrived, has arrived. How do you know that? So you need additional. So here is a tick. 
So what do you do is you are going to keep a, a software counter which is basically incremented for every tick. So for every tick, you are incrementing this. And then you compare with the future time value of the elements in the queue. Now, since this is ordered, you just have to compare with the first element. And when that they, they match, you could uh, you basically say, okay, this can be now executed. So you do the callback. And then of course you delete it from this and your head of the queue is adjusted for this next event. The problem with this is that what do you store in the time value? So this clock is free running, tick. And then when you compare it with, so what is the value that is stored there? At the time of insertion, okay? So you take the clock value, the, tick, uh, the, the software clock value, add the delta, which is the, the duration after which, or the period after which you are expecting the event to create this time value. And when that time instance has arrived, so this current tick, so current time, and these two will be equal. So then you know that this event has uh, arrived. And so you can execute this by calling this callback function. It is possible that multiple timers are expected to execute at the same current time because it's just coincidence, right? So you may have to go on traversing this list until as long as this current time matches with the time values here. So basically you traverse the so you traverse the the list or queue matching current time with stored future time. As long as it is equal, while equal. So you, I'm writing pseudocode here. So you do the callback function and then remove the node and then uh, repeat this. So, and when it is not equal, you, you don't have to do anything. You just, you, you move on. And the next tick happens, you go on. So basically this is a very uh, simple way of doing it. It's a natural uh, way of doing it. You could see some uh, potential uh, issues there. So the insert operation is uh, basically you have to traverse to the, uh, so you have to traverse the entire, in the worst case, entire queue to add a new event. It's more likely that future events are added in the end of the queue, right? So if you have more insert operations, this overhead of, um, so basically you have a linear list. Right, so linear list traversal is going to be a lot. Now imagine if your entire application is only protocol software and most of the timers that you are uh, scheduling or timeouts, which are not expected to happen. So you are actually wasting a lot of time inserting uh, information or inf inserting nodes, which are going to be eventually stopped, deleted. So your insert and delete so you may insert it once and then immediately you may delete it. So, or you may delete it after, you know, after the event happens. So what happens is that very likely that you started with certain queue and then you are saying after, let's say three seconds, uh, after three seconds Delta, you want to schedule a timeout. So you are actually inserting um, current time plus, three seconds and imagine this is where it belongs in the queue, you have inserted it. And then moment that response comes, so you're going to do a, so this is the insert operation. And moment the response comes, you're going to again traverse this risk and then do the delete operation. So most of the time you are doing insertion and deletion and for that you may have to traverse this list a lot. So it is not necessarily um, the best, but if, if it is, so this is not the ideal for timeouts. If timeouts are what you are doing, when is it useful? For example, 
uh, if you are actually not doing timeout, but you are actually doing a lot of sequences of of delays. For example, a uh, very classic example of when it is useful to have a linked list is in what is called discrete event simulations, right? Discrete event uh, simulations, where you are actually your list is all list of future events. So it's a queue or list of future events. And as a simulator, you are not going to, you know, you may insert, of course, uh, insert and deletion may be there, but most likely you will be uh, dequeuing from the head the most imminent event and then do whatever uh, handling and then move on to the next. Now, in fact, uh, in simulate, you don't have the real time clock, you have what is called simulated clock. So what happens is you just pretend that, you know, so many uh, instances have happened, you just go to the next uh, thing in the queue and then adjust your clock to this time. So you, you don't have to do the intermediate steps. That is why it is discrete. So you don't, you don't have to have so many ticks. Uh, you can just adjust your simulated clock to the next event. So this is basically discrete event simulation, which is a variation, but it, it's not a real time clock. It is a simulated clock. So it is a lot simpler. And most of the operations are basically dequeuing. Insertions will be there. Dequeuing will be there. Uh, deletion may or may not be that common. So it is efficient from that point of view. So the question is, is this the best that you can do? Not really. Uh, but there is something called uh, calendar queues or calendar queues. Basically, you you do a composite thing. You can have an array, which is basically you are you are scheduling uh, certain blocks of future times here. So it's now. So now let's say equal to t. Then you may you may have a st step size something like delta t. To delta t and so on, and then your current timer is cycling through this. So this is the current, and then of course this whole thing is like number of n into delta t is your range of uh, interval, maximum possible interval. Then for each bucket, you may have a queue. And uh, that may queue only those events which are due for expiry between now and delta t. Okay, so you may store t plus some smaller delta t, maybe some three delta t, five delta t, and so on. So basically, what happens is that the number of such, the probability that this length of the queue is uh, more than one or two is very less because you are already quantizing this timer. So you are now storing only a linked list of possible uh, future events, which are going to happen between now and delta t. Similarly, for it may be empty also. So you may have a null queue. You may have something in the future, which may have one or two events and so on. So basically, you are, you are combining, you are combining a, some kind of a, a bucket strategy with the queue strategy. So for each bucket, the queue length is less. So your insertion operations will happen. Basically, you compute the from the future event, let's say future event, you can do a modulo uh, arithmetic on this and then say, okay, T plus which bucket, bucket K. And so I need to insert it in this bucket for this future event. Uh, it may be the Kth bucket. So then I insert a queue entry here with the Delta T with respect to this. Uh, this uh, so basically, you are distributing the queue across multiple quantized levels of this, and uh, only it's like your calendar where you have events scheduled for today, this week, or month, or so, something like that. So you might be able to distribute the queue, and therefore the queue traversal can be uh, reduced for insert and delete operations. And this will relentlessly cycle through this for every tick, with assuming delta t is the tick, uh, this one, uh, resolution. It will go through this 
and then look whether this queue is empty or not. If this queue is empty, it will do nothing. If queue is not empty, traverse this queue and then execute uh, or call back. Okay, so this is more typical implementation as opposed to a simple uh, global linear uh, list. You are basically uh, combining it with a bucket strategy. So that's basically what, uh, so to summarize, we have three operations, an insert operation, that is when you are in registering a callback. In fact, callback registration can be done at the creation time. And then you may have a distinct operation called start timer, which is same callback function. So you don't have to install the callback function pointer. You just give what is the future time, time instance. So you are not installing the callback again and again. So you can do a start stop timer and you can have additional API of deregistering the callback. This is another variation. So this is basically to do with installing a, the function pointer or removing it. And this is to start and stop a timer. So uh, you use the handle returned by this, uh, this create timer. So this handle is, when you do a create timer, this handle you use for uh, this. So you provide a handle parameter for start and stop timer. 